Good morning, and welcome to the worship of God here at Westminster. We do welcome those churches from the area that have found our online worship, and we're glad that you're joining us today. I do want to make mention that if you have a prayer request, if you would comment on Facebook, those prayer requests will be included later in the service. The session has made the decision to continue worshiping uh, virtually through the month of August, and so we will uh, continue to provide online services uh, through August, and then hopefully in September be able to uh, gather together again as a worshiping community. Let us unite in the call to worship. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for the Lord is our God. We are the Lord's people, the flock that God shepherds. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth a royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth a royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. O seed of Israel's chosen race, now ransomed from the fall. Tell him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Let every tongue and every tribe on this terrestrial ball him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. To him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all. Oh, that with all the sacred throng we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. If we say we have no sin, we are self-deceived and strangers to the truth. But if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us unite in the prayer of confession. God of everlasting love, we confess that we have been unfaithful to our covenant with you and with one another. We have worshiped other gods, money, power, greed, and convenience. We have served our own self-interest instead of serving only you and your people. We have not loved our, loved our neighbor as you have commanded, nor have we rightly loved ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God, and bring us back into the fullness of our covenant with you and with one another. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us say together these words of assurance. 
We bear witness to the good news of God's promise. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. May the Lord make us increase and abound in love for one another and for all. And may God so strengthen our hearts in holiness that we may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hand hath provided, great is thy faithfulness, Lord. theme of the stories I've heard for so long. God has been faithful. He will be again. His loving compassion, it knows no Great 
tis thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Let us unite in the prayer for illumination. Living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Acts. We read from chapter 20, and we'll actually be reading from verses 7 through verse 12. Hear the word of God. On the first day of the week, when we met to break bread, Paul was holding a discussion with them since he intended to leave the next day. He continued speaking until midnight. There were many lamps in the room upstairs where we were meeting. A young man named Eutyches, who was sitting in the window, began to sink off into a deep sleep while Paul talked still longer. Overcome by sleep, he fell to the ground three floors below and was picked up dead. But Paul went down and bending over him, took him in his arms and said, Do not be alarmed, for his life is in him. Then Paul went upstairs, and after he had broken bread and eaten, he continued to converse with them until dawn. Then he left. Meanwhile, they had taken the boy away alive and were not a little comforted. Here ends the reading of the text. May God add his blessings to this, the reading of his holy word. Once again, if you have a prayer request, we ask that you put it as a comment on Facebook and we'll include it in our prayers later in the service. Let us pray now as we come to the scripture for the day. Gracious God, as we seek your wisdom for our lives, open our hearts to your living word. May we reflect the hope and joy and promise that it is ours in the faith. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. This is a remarkable set of occurrences that occurs in this story in Acts. The theme of Acts has turned away from the early church as it was developing in Jerusalem and now looks at the church as it spreads around the Mediterranean area. And we also see certain practices becoming entrenched in church life. Certain things uh, have become typical for what the church does. And we note that the meeting that takes place is on the first day of the week. And this now becomes the practice for Christians and the practice for the Christian church throughout the centuries. On the first day of the week we gather, it was on the first day of the week that the resurrection occurred. And even as we go through the many uh, events of the church year and the many practices that have been added on to the practice of the faith, it's always on that first day of the week, the little resurrection that we gather. Each Sunday celebrates the resurrection, and fasting on Sunday is never encouraged, 
In fact, each Sunday is to be a celebration, even during the somber times of the season, of the seasons of the church year, like Advent and Lent. Each Sunday is a resurrection. So the story begins simply enough on the first day of the week, but we should recognize what a big change this is. It's an understated comment made by the author of the book of Acts, and it, this is one of those portions of Acts where we get the impression that Luke is right there in the midst of the action. We gathered on the first day of the week, and so we have a first-hand account of all the events that occur here. There are a number of symbols in Christendom that remind us of how important that first day of the week is for us and what it means to always live in the shadow of the resurrection, to live in the presence of a risen Lord. And so the baptismal font always has eight sides to it. It represents the new creation, that eighth day in which on the first day of the new source of life, we gather. Some of the early churches, the earliest church in Christendom, probably in Capernaum, it was excavated and there was an eight-sided structure found there, a reminder of that new life that begins, that new promise that is ours, so that theme on the first day of the week, on the day when the new life begins, when the promise of the resurrection is made real, well, that should be for us something that wakes us up every time we gather. We stand in the presence of the resurrection on this day. And this is no small matter to serve a risen Lord, to say that the Spirit of Christ is always in our midst and that one who is risen now reigns in heaven, this is a huge promise for the faithful. And as we think about how our lives need to change, as we think about what is in our life that needs to be made new, the promise of the resurrection is that promise of new life. It is a huge, huge promise. There's another part of this story, and I think uh, probably some of you more than I have experienced this part of the story, and that is where the sermon just goes on and on and you can barely believe how long it is. Uh, maybe sometimes this has resulted in prayers, prayers that go like, Lord, take me now, as the sermon just winds on and on. I like the way that Luke makes no attempt to uh, sugarcoat this issue at all. It was midnight, and he was still talking. It was hot in the room, and people were falling asleep, and he wouldn't be quiet. And someone who dozes in this crowded upper room falls out the window. And uh, not a few commentators notice that Eutyches, when translated, actually means lucky. And you have to wonder, well, was the lucky part before he fell out, or you have to say it really occurred afterwards, in which a miracle of the resurrection once again occurs as the young man falls out the window and then is healed by Paul. I like the part of the story that says, Paul goes up, he has a snack, and then he preaches some more and in fact keeps the audience there until about dawn. Um, I rarely felt the need to uh, 
replenish my strength during the course of a sermon. It might be good to have a cookie up here every once in a while. I can see that. But uh, this actual story of Paul taking a break, even after someone has died, and then he continues with the message. Uh, to have that kind of passion for the word that he was proclaiming is a reminder of the power that was there in the early church and the power that can be ours now. We speak a message of vital importance. It has to do with our connection of the source of all life. It directs our lives with purpose and fills our lives with the very Spirit of God. This is a message that's worth talking about over and over again. It gives us a critique of a world that has gone astray and offers up alternatives to the living God. And it also gives us a sense of peace and presence even in the midst of a fallen world. God is still at work. And that's a lot to proclaim. This is a message that should continue to bring us hope, even in a time when hope seems such a precious commodity. God is at work. And as we see it in this story, in the reminder of the resurrection, and more importantly, in the saving of the life of a young boy, we see that God's hand has not left us but was very present in that early church. And while we've grown wise enough not to build our sanctuaries three floors off the ground with open windows, we do appreciate the power of the story to remind us about new life. That's what we are about, new life. And as that story reminds us, we can be transformed by a word that comes to us. Later on, uh, Paul continues on his journey, a journey that ultimately ends in Rome. And tradition has it that it would ultimately end in his own death. But in the meantime, there is this story of new life as we contemplate what it means to be people of the resurrection, as we continue in the hope of our faith, that word make us eager to stay up, to listen carefully, and to always trust that God is in our very midst. All praise and thanks to God. To God be the glory. Amen. We affirm our faith with words from the book of Romans. Let us unite together. We believe there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to God's purpose. We are convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we come to our prayers this morning, we do have these prayer requests. From John Fireharm, uh, he asked for prayers for his brother, Jeff. Uh, he's in Oregon and he's facing cancer. And prayers for him and for the doctors who are treating him. Uh, this is from Sandy White. Uh, prayers of joy for Patrick White's 37th birthday today and also for his covenant partner, Judy Staffstrom's birthday. Uh, Judy would have been the partner who saw him through con uh, confirmation, and it's neat that they both share a birthday. 
We also remember with great sadness this week uh, the murder of Johnny Black Haygood. Johnny was a worshiper with us. Uh, he was the boyfriend of Monica Grayson, and together they were often in worship when it was possible for us to gather. Um, as the family faces that loss, as services were held this past week, we pray for ways to hold them up and to show them God's care in this difficult time. With these concerns, let us come to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray for those locked in circumstances beyond their control, restrained by oppressors and seeing no end to their captivity. May they discover hope buried in deepest suffering through Jesus Christ, who shared the weakness and despair of human life, yet gave even death a new outcome and brought resurrection from a closed tomb. We pray for the church set in the world to show how people belong together and how your gifts are given to be shared. Grant that as we feel for the rejection and voicelessness of others, we may meet Christ in them and bear witness to his transforming love and also receive the love so freely offered we pray for the communities in which we live and work, for people under stress and unable to deal with their difficulties, for those who seek comfort in ways which bring no help, for all who are fearful. Give us grace to show by our concern and actions how each is loved and valued by you. We remember those now hidden from us, but at home with you. We give thanks especially for those who have strengthened our weak faith and built up our trust in you, and by their lives have drawn us into the life of Christ, who died in weakness and now reigns in glory. It is to Christ's care we now hold those concerns that are dear to our hearts. And we offer up our prayers in silence now to a gracious God. And now as our Savior has taught us, we pray together saying, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We now pause for a moment to offer ourselves and our resources to the service of God. Let us now offer our gifts to God.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all people here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. Praise Triune God whom we adore. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we seek your blessings upon all that we offer as we offer our gifts of service to you. May they be a blessing for all those they touch. As we offer our gifts of money, may they be a reminder for us that all good things come from you and are offered back in service to you. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. God who's giving no knows ending from your rich and endless store nature's wonder Jesus wisdom costly cross grave shattered door Gifted by you, we turn to you, offering up ourselves in praise. Thankful song shall rise forever, gracious donor of our day. Skills and time are ours for pressing toward the goals of Christ your Son. All at peace in health and freedom, graces joined the church made one. Now direct our daily labor, lest we strive for self alone. Born with talents, make us servants fit to answer at your throne. Treasure to you have entrusted, gained through powers your grace grew. Ours to use for home and kindred, and to spread the gospel world. Open wide our hands in sharing, as we heed Christ's ageless call. Healing, teaching, and reclaiming, serving you by loving all. As God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience, forgiving one another as the Lord has forgiven you. And crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in harmony. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with you always. Amen. Amen.